since this is my channel, I figured I'd start the conversation. I'm Meredith Vieira, and this is my overshare. I'm talking to you from one of my favorite haunts in my neighborhood. It's the Red Hat. It's a wonderful restaurant. It's right along the Hudson River. And that river has been a place where I have come to reflect so many times at different stages of my life about where I am and what I want, uh, dreams. Sometimes I've, I've walked the river crying. Many times I've walked the river with friends um, deep into conversation. So it's right that I should have this conversation with you in this particular place. My 20s, starting out, new career, thought endless possibilities. This is Newswatch 10. Good evening, I'm Meredith Vieira. Totally believed that I was going to make it to 60 Minutes. That was my goal, and I was a new television journalist in Providence, Rhode Island, my hometown. Meredith Vieira, Newswatch 10. And about a year and a half into the job, my boss took me aside on a Friday and said, I don't think you have what it takes. I'll never forget this. He, uh, he said, I just don't think you have what it takes. And I was really upset and I went home. I lived in, I grew up in East Providence. So I went home to my parents' house. I was crying in my bed. And my father came in and he said, what's the matter? And I said, I just lost my job. And he asked me why and I told him, well, the news director said, I don't have what it takes. And he looked at me and he said, well, do you think you have what it takes? And I said, yeah, I do. He said, well, then don't listen to him. He says, if people throughout your life are gonna tell you that you don't have what it, what it takes. You have to believe in yourself. And if you believe in yourself, then doors will open for you. You know, there are these moments, pivotal moments in your life, and that was one for me. And I went back, that was a Friday. I went back that Monday and I confronted my boss. And I cornered him in his office. I think I freaked him out. I said, I don't care what you think. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna succeed, um, despite what you say. And he stood there for a minute. He said, you know what? I'm gonna give you another shot. And he, they rehired me. I, I've got a bunch of pictures here. My dad, Edwin, was a doctor, family practitioner. Wonderful guy, really great guy. The kind who um, made house calls at two in the morning, back when doctors did that kind of thing. This is the most recent graduate, Gabe, graduating from Northwestern. He's looking for work, actually, as a, a journalist. This photo it means a lot to me. These are all the cousins. And then this is Lily's self-portrait, and it's from May of 1997. She would have been four years old when she drew that. Shot of my mom with Ben. She was a fantastic mother, and she instilled in her kids such strength of character. And then this is Richard and I. That tells you everything you need to know about our relationship right there. You know, we faced some adversity along the way because of Richard's health. My husband, uh, Richard, was diagnosed with MS when he was 25, and when I met him, he already had the disease, and I was in love with the guy, and it, it sort of figured, I, you know, everybody's gonna have something, that's okay. And we had three great kids, and it just became a part of our lives. Uh, one more thing that we deal with. I, I live with an incredible man who's very, very strong and has shown me what real character is, and shown my kids as well. My mom used to have um, studio photos done of us when we were little. I always, growing up, had this pixie, and I hated this pixie. But I was a happy kid. I just had a terrible haircut. And this is when I was going off to college, and I really wanted to be an actress, but I didn't tell my parents that. I said I was going to be a math major. By the time I was a junior, the dean called me in at Tufts. I'll never forget this. He said, if you want to graduate with your class, you better pick a major fast, and it's going to be English. And I did graduate with my class. This is me and my dad. This is one of those real stagey photos. Hello, I'm a journalist with my pad there and my pencil or my pen. This is the randomness of, of life. The talent scout who was wandering around the country going from a hotel to hotel and watching local news spotted me in Providence. And a couple of days later, New York City called Channel 2 News in New York and said, are you available to talk? Uh, yeah, I guess so. And I went to New York and I got that job in, in New York City and, and from there moved to the network and, and then eventually made my way to the one job that I wanted more than anything else and that was 60 Minutes. And suddenly my two worlds collided of having a family and having a career. And I was torn from day one. I just, you know, it was, I finally, after having five miscarriages, I finally had a child, a healthy child, a little boy, and I 
hated leaving him. It was really difficult for me. Um, and it really was a, a boys club, 60 Minutes. And so much of it was being seen and hanging out with Don Hewitt. And I, I, I get all of that, but it's not where my head was at. I, I just wanted to do my job and, and go home, go home to Richard and Ben. And eventually I got pregnant with my second son, Gabe. And uh, I didn't know how to tell Don Hewitt because I thought, oh gosh, I'm going to you know, tell him I want six more months. My boss said, you have to do a certain number of stories this year in order to stay at 60 Minutes. And I, I said, look, I can't. I'm going on maternity leave. And they said, well, if you can't do it, then, you're gonna, then you don't have a job. And I said, you know what? Okay, then I don't have a job. The, the irony is, as upset as I was, I slept so well that night because I absolutely knew I had made the right decision. Boy. I think that life's about setting priorities and, and re-examining them on a regular basis. And it's something I learned in my 30s, that you have to know what you can handle, what's right for you, and follow that. And who cares what anybody else thinks? It doesn't matter. It's your life. Be nice to yourself. It's so, particularly women, we get, we're so, you know, maybe it's that we're nurturing and we feel we have to take care of everybody but ourselves. You know, we're always the last ones to, to take care of ourselves. and. Uh, Never feel like we're good enough, that we've done enough for the family. My 40s were really about finding balance, because now I really was juggling three kids and my husband. And then The View came along. And it was my husband who said, you know, you're the one, because I had kids, I didn't want to report. You know, a reporter who doesn't want to report, you don't want to travel, try it. And I auditioned for the show, and I came home and I said, you're not gonna believe this, I actually like this. I never really expressed myself. And now suddenly I could say what I think. And so I said it a lot um, with a lot of other kind of pushy ladies on that same panel. But that was good for me. And I learned the importance of, uh, in a way that's Eve and being willing to debate it. I, I certainly had confidence in my 50s about my career. But I sort of felt I was set. You know, I knew what I was doing. Everything seemed to be balanced pretty well. And then I had the opportunity to go to the Today Show. Never thought I'd go back to news, really didn't want to, but something in me said, go try it. I actually am a very private person and, and extremely shy, believe it or not, which is funny given my business. I think one of the things that attracted me about the news business uh, was that it forced me out of my comfort zone. It forced me to connect with people, to help bring them out so that they could share their stories. And I, felt, I learned anything through my years in journalism as to how important it is to share how much we need to connect with each other. I remember when I had my first miscarriage, people said, well, don't talk about that. I discovered so many other people in the same position and we were able to help each other. And now it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm entering a new stage of my life. I find you're always reinventing yourself uh, and probably in every business. And, and that's a challenge, but also I'm gonna be 60 and uh, starting to think about, well, well what do I want to accomplish in the next 10 or 20 years? The great thing about having this channel is that so many people can possibly see this and connect to it and feed back with their own stories. And I think that that's incredibly empowering for all of us. I mean, when I look back at, you know, if I hadn't had that conversation with my dad on that bed on that day when I had just been fired from my first job in television, if he hadn't given me the courage to go back, I don't know where I'd be today, you know? I used to always think the road was straight. I don't believe at all that you, the road you travel in life is straight. I think there's constant deviations. There's all these little side roads, and you can't be afraid to go down the side road. Just because you think the straight road's um, probably a little more secure, the side roads are where you find the most interesting things. Live is a place where women can gather and share their stories, even overshare. Join the conversation.